Chapter 436, The Lord In fact, Nojua Takenabu was confused too. If his speculation about Lu Xu's class C level was true, Nojua would still be able to kill him even in close proximity. After all, he had full confidence that his class B capabilities would not be affected, at most a certain degree of feebleness. But Lu Xu seemed to be 100% certain of his victory as he drew closer. In the cultivation realm, the weak were totally defenseless against the strong. There were few exceptions as one's combat skills could not lie about his true strength. But today, Nojua Takenabu had learned a lesson, tricks could outrun true power. Lu Xu had noticed it too. In the past, the sun mirror was almost a piece of crap except for its illumination function. Even the head-twisting gourd was more useful than it. At the very least, the gourd could be used to effortlessly kill people. Lu Xu had even given this special technique of him a name, called, Attendance Taking. Yet, now that the gourd was on a strike, it led the example of being an unreliable weapon. Until then, Lu Xu realized that the mirror could be rather effective when it was put to proper use. He could fix the mirror in front of his chest to blind his opponent's eyes, be it for close combats or far-ranged fights. In addition, the mirror was far better than normal high beams. Which high beams could make people's eyes prick? When he became famous, who would dare to fight with Lu Xu without putting his shades on? Forcing every single expert in the world to wear sunglasses was an extraordinary feat too, wasn't it? At the moment, Lu Xu was running behind Nojua to Kenabu in the tunnel. Though in this way Nojua's vision would not be affected by the light, he couldn't keep on running without looking back at all either. Well, in fact, he had to be like that. His eyes would be temporarily blinded for a while so long as he turned. Then, Nojoa reached the end of the straight tunnel. The passage turned into a corner. Everything would be over after he hid in the corner and dealt a fatal blow to that disgusting type metahuman. Only that fellow's death could erase his hatred now. Anyway, that mirror could not violate the laws of physics to bend the path of light around corners. Thus, it would have no advantage there. Hidden in the dogleg, Nojoa Takenabo held his breath. His right hand gripped onto the handle of his katana, veins throbbing visibly on the back of his hands. His eyes were narrowed, eyeing for the instant to slash his enemy apart. He would not even mind if the light shone at that second, as his attack would definitely be lethal. However, Lu Xu's footsteps suddenly slowed down when approaching the corner. Nojoa Takenabu was on tenterhooks. He was well aware of his opponent's cunningness, but his old tricks would not work in this instance. So, do you still intend to pursue? Nojoa sneered. At that instant, a spear poked in furtively, and tied on its tip was, a sun. Kaka kaka, the sun mirror actually flashed ten times in the blink of an eye. Then it was immediately taken back. Nojoa Takenabu subconsciously hacked his katana forward, but only to hit the air. So was his purple snake. Freak, it totally caught Nojoa off guard. Now, in the absence of strong light, his vision was teeming with colorful dots, green, blue, red. Why are there so many tricky moves? Huh? What kind of fighter on earth did the heavenly network groom? From Nojoa to Kenabu's distress, plus 1000. Nojoa to Kenabu immediately took to his heels, while his snake sprang to the air as defense against potential attack of flying daggers. But why had he not used his dagger yet? Forget it, the main priority now was to regain his vision somewhere safe. Nojua's power had almost plunged to the nadir of class B, now, he had given up his plan of killing Lu Xu, as the latter was not an ordinary class C anyway, but an extremely disgusting one. Frailty was setting in. Now, he must stabilize his strength or else, he might die. But how would Lu Xu let go of this precious opportunity? It was a moment of life and death. In an instant, Corpse Dog and Concealed Arrow swooshed out from his celestial map. In a split second, Corpse Dog had blocked the Purple Snake's escape route and the two were trapped in a tangle. As Nojua's weapon spirit was supplied with his Class B mana, 
it was no easy task to defeat the snake either. Thus, Lu Xu had no alternatives but to send in his concealed arrow too. The snake was as quick as thunderbolts. The daggers and the serpent were engaged in an intense fight, leaving behind a trail of broken stone pieces. Clearly the snake was targeting Lu Xu, but it was held back by the daggers. It was a smart move on Nojua's side. If Lu Xu exhibited any loopholes when fighting back his snake, he might still be able to reverse the situation. With corpse dog and concealed arrow dealing with the snake behind, Lu Xu glided through the tunnels swiftly with his divine water like a coming flood. In fact, the divine water was large enough to fill up the entire space of a segment of the tunnel, even carrying Lu Xu Madere. The strong corrosiveness of the water smoothed the passage walls, but by no means slowing down the speed of traveling. Usually, deceleration was necessary as one changed his direction when running. But it was different with the divine water with high permeability. Seeing Lu Xu's increased speed as compared to earlier, Nojoa Takenabu was shocked and puzzled. Who was he, really? Besides his rare possession of two flying daggers, could he be a water-type metahuman in addition to his strength-type power? That could explain the decision of the Heavenly Network to release him into the overseas remains this time. There were high expectations on him. According to the information available, there was indeed a hidden water-type talent under Chan Bailey's wings in southern Tibet. Nojua Takenabu asked coldly as he ran, Are you Zhao Minka? Never heard of the name. Like what I said, I am your lord. Did you follow my words and transfer me the money? Lu Xu shouted in Japanese. From Nojoa Takenabu's distress, plus 999. Nojoa Takenabu almost choked on his anger. Why? Were you flexing your acting skills now, huh? Chapter 437 Lu Xu's Trump Cards. Nojoa Takenabu ran like a madman. Soon they reached the entrance of the hollows outside the palace. In the meantime, crowds of individual practitioners were still trying to negotiate with those big organizations in the faint hope that they could find a way out of being their cannon fodder. But that was none of the big organizations' business, they were only concerned about which way would most likely lead them to the relic. Then, in everyone's alert state, Nojoa Takenabu, who was strong enough to chase two heavenly network members around, ran out crazily from a hole. Is he being chased by a monster? A native creature, a person shouted in alarm. In their impression, Nojoa Takenabu was a peak class B expert. So what else could be behind him? Instantly everyone was seized by fear. But in the next instant, they saw flashes from inside the tunnel. What kind of creature could glow by itself? Then, Lu Xu dashed out with divine water all over his body. Those practitioners facing him were blinded at once by the sun mirror. It's him. My eyes. Other practitioners who were unaffected studied Lu Xu's new style. A bronze mirror tied to his chest, emitting flickering golden lights like signals in a nightclub. What was this urge to dance to that rhythm? What kind of attacking techniques was that? What a freak! However, wasn't Nojoa Takenabu the one chasing him just a while earlier? Why had it turned around? Gazing at Lu Xu's and Nojoa Takenabu's receding figures, Howard drew a deep breath. Who brought shades? Anyone? Howard put himself in Nojoa's shoes. Indeed, he would be very much disgusted if he encountered Lu Xu in the tunnel as well. Meanwhile, the deities were also gathering outside the hollows discussing whether to force individual practitioners to be their canaries. But before they could reach a conclusion, they saw Lu Xu chasing Nojoa Takenabu out. The leader of the deities. Coral. Surprise. Despite Coral's confidence that Lu Xu would be safe, the abrupt plot twist was still beyond her expectations. The leader kept silent for a long moment. I admire your taste, Coral. He is strong, but I find him, kinda special. He was referring to the sun mirror in front of Lu Xu's chest. Both Lu Xu and Nojoa Takenabu were intently engaged in their game of pursuit. 
The gap in between was closing fast. Nojoa knew well that his time was running out. No one could escape the sequel of that double sword technique. Just when he was about to be caught up, Nojoa Takenabu suddenly turned, his eyes shut tight, and swung his katana at Lu Shu with full strength. Though knowing that the divine water could erode magical weapons, what other choice was he left with? Was his failure certain yet? No. All that was needed was to behead his enemy before the divine water had enough time to destroy his katana completely. And he was fast. A gorgeous ray of purple flashed over Nojoa Takenabu's head. It was about to split the divine water open and demolish Lu Shu directly. Nojoa could even feel the blinking light rays from behind his eyelids. With all boats burnt, it was an instance of life and death. In fact, Nojoa Takenabu had yet another card up his sleeve, his tontos, to deal the final thrusts. The confined space provided the perfect conditions for the tontos, but he had to peel the divine water off Lushu first. The use of the ace in the hole permitted no errors. Upon contact, the katana cleaved through the waves and thrust downwards. Just as a confident smile curled up from the corner of Nojoa's lips, the huge volumes of divine water actually swelled up to cushion off the tremendous impact. Then, he caught hold of the blade with his bare hands. Bare hands against naked blade. Nojoa Takenobo wanted to draw his katana back, but Lu Shu's obsession with magical weapons could never be underestimated. He simply would not let go. From Nojoa Takenobo's distress, plus 999. The movement of the divine water did not stop. It swelled up towards the katana immediately, and then swept towards Nojoa Takenobu. It was totally unexpected. With unstable power, he would not risk all his spirit chi in resistance of the highly corrosive divine water. Without a choice, he had to forego his katana. What a deep-seated hatred. Nojoa Takenabu had never expected himself to be forced into such a predicament. In fact, it was all thanks to the Heavenly Network. He would never have become so weak if the two had not tricked him into using his clandestine technique. Otherwise, he would have no qualms with breaking through the divine water barrier with his spirit chi armor and put Lu Shu to death on the spot. But it was too late now. Since neither flight nor fight could win him the battle now, he had to bet on his life. Immediately Nojoa extracted his tontos, concentrating the remaining spirit chi into a piece of translucent armor. His foundation deteriorated rapidly without the nourishment of mana. Thus, he would certainly face a downgrade of his power even if he could take down Lushu now. The thought that he would never be able to climb back to class C ever again was simply unbearable. Then, limitless hostility flooded his heart. Now, the only thing left in his mind was to drive his tonto into Lu Xu's heart, and take away everything he had. But in that instant, he could only stare as Lu Xu made a quick retreat with the divine water around his katana. Freaking shameless. You wanna run once you got my stuff? Are you heavenly network a bunch of monkeys? From Nojoa to Kenabu's distress, plus 999. In the meantime, the constant light from the sun mirror radiated outwards through the divine water, mapping undulating waves onto the walls of the cavern. Truth be told, Lu Shu was suffering from the flashes too. As soon as the katana was encapsulated by the divine water, the snake immediately got rid of corpse dog and concealed arrow in an attempt to return to its home. But soon it also fell into the control of the water just like the katana. The purple snake thrashed back and forth just to return to the katana, which was being consumed by the water. Finally, the tiny serpent found its way back to rest in the katana. Meanwhile, corpse dog and concealed arrow immediately returned to Lushu after their target was lost. The daggers glared at Nojoa Takenabu, who had fallen into complete desperation. He risked all he had in exchange for a final blow, in vain. At the moment, Lu Shu had used up all his trump cards to keep his distance from Nojoa. With his flying daggers, he would be able to drain Nojoa to Kenabu to death effortlessly. Chapter 438 Capture Weapon Spirit When the two flying daggers came to Nojoa to Kenabu, 
he was still struggling to survive like a trapped beast. Was he afraid of death? Of course he was. But when that moment truly arrived, a sense of courage and uprightness welled up in his heart. Despite their notorious reputation for their unforgivably wicked and crazy nature, the collection of gods were unyieldingly serious towards items of significance. As a matter of fact, cog practitioners were full of conflicting passions. Violence and beauty, arrogance and courtesy, stubbornness and unpredictability, loyal yet susceptible to betrayal, courageous yet timid, easy to tame yet too wild to rule. All those were elucidated in detail in the book the chrysanthemum and the sword. They were a contradictory race. Many people think favorably of Japan for its beauty, such as sakura, tatami and Japanese black iron teapot, as though everything can be associated with elegance. But at the same time, their undisguised display of evil often draws distaste as well. Every coin has two sides and one should not rush to any conclusions too hastily. However, the kind spirits in the collection of gods had been gradually worn off during factional conflicts. It was not because good men were weaker, though, but their unwillingness to do harm to others. It was precisely their innocence and the simplistic belief in humans' good nature that gave their lives away. The deterioration of Nojoa to Kenobu's power was extremely fast. He would have been able to maintain his Class B status for a lifetime had he not exhausted all his spirit chi earlier. Yet, too many mistakes had been committed in this battle. The two incredibly shameless fighters from the Heavenly Network and their unorthodox fighting techniques had totally caught him off guard. Nor had he expected a seemingly useless Class C boy had so many cards up his sleeve, and that he could put all of them to creative use. In the boy's hands, even a simple illumination mirror became a powerful weapon. Nojua Takenabu struggled to support himself against the wall with his tonto in his grip. Corpse dog and concealed arrow slit open countless wounds over his entire body, and his face was as as pale as paper due to the severe loss of blood. Corpse dog took away his happiness and concealed arrow deprived him of anger, and all that was left within him was an unprecedented peace of mind. He glanced over his devastated body, suddenly wondering how he had come to this step. Nojua Takenabu murmured to himself, why? At the other end of the cavern, Lu Xu sneered. Didn't I already tell you? Calamity will surely befall you within three days unless you copy Namo Avalokiteshvara ten times. Nojua Takenabu paused for a long moment but found it impossible to rebut. From Nojua Takenabu's distress, plus 1,000. All the fight seemed to go out of Nojoa to Kenabu. Instantly, corpse dog and concealed arrow punctured his heart, putting one of the three class B cog experts to eternal sleep. Lu Xu called his flying daggers back to his celestial map and then tossed Nojoa to Kenabu's tonto to the divine water to be consumed. By then, the shape of the katana had completely disappeared, together with its intense purple color. All of a sudden, the purple snake emerged from the blade again, bouncing to and fro crazily in an attempt to escape. However, how was it possible given that its main body was already dead? Just when Lu Xu expected the little serpent to vanish like the wisp of black smoke and gargoyles, the purple scales on the body of the snake suddenly turned golden instead of being corroded. What's going on? Lu Xu was stunned. He was pretty sure that the divine water had no consciousness, but how could the little snake turn golden unharmed? It took a total of one hour for every inch of the snake's body to fully transform into golden color. Moreover, the snake had gradually given up its struggle during the process, and glazed over. Then, through the connection between himself and the divine water, Lu Xu sensed the snake's thirst for blood. Upon second thoughts, he pricked his index finger with concealed arrow and squeezed a drop of blood into the divine water. Immediately, the golden snake came alive. It swam over and swallowed Lu Xu's blood at once. Then, Lu Xu could feel the strengthening of bond between him and the divine water, and the establishment of a new connection with the snake. In fact, the golden snake actually became the weapon spirit of the water. Such an unexpected gain. 
Lu Xu had always been jealous of Li Aixiao for his ability to conjure up a powerful black dragon from his spear as an extra hand. Judging from the fight earlier, Nojua Takenabu's purple snake actually held back both of his flying daggers. Undeniably, it was a strong weapon when combined with Class B powers. And now, he, Lu Xu, had his own weapon spirit too. In the meantime, Lu Xu controlled the snake to come out of the divine water. Knowing that the abilities of weapon spirits were aligned with those of their owners, Lu Xu was curious about the might it could unleash under him. To his surprise, the golden snake refused to come out no matter what. No, it was stuck inside. Lu Xu's face darkened at once. It had never been a smooth sail for his journey on magical weapons. Recently, the acquisition of divine water was a bliss, could there be something wrong with it too? With great difficulty he had managed to capture a weapon spirit, which ended up not even able to come out of his divine water just when Lu Xu was daydreaming about his bright future. None of his magical weapons were reliable, were they? Huh? Still sulking, Lu Xu threw the Tonto into the divine water. At the moment, he had yet to fully understand its origin and function. Coupled with the fact that the water was one of his most precious assets in addition to corpse dog and concealed arrow, he had to continue feeding it no matter what. The gourd was totally useless at the moment. Ill-intentioned, Lu Xu scanned his gourd and flying sword in his seal of lands, wondering whether it would be a good idea to feed it to divine water too. Forget it, Lu Xu shook his head. Apparently, the sword would do his work one day. Besides, he had not figured out their origin. If it was really that piece of legendary treasure, wouldn't the flying sword stab him if he threw it to the divine water? Lu Xu thought with a guilty conscience. Then, he was stunned by what he saw. The golden snake was drawn to the tonto, and immediately bit a piece off its blade. Then, it took another bite at once, showing no sign of indigestion at all. The rate of weapon consumption was way faster than before. Within a minute, the snake had eaten up the entire Tonto. Eh, the main function of divine water itself was to swallow other weapons. However, in actual combats, its efficiency was much compromised as it had to first drain the spirit chi imbued in the weapons. But now, his golden snake could finish up the job well, and fast. Chapter 439, Lu Xu's Markings Inside the walls, it was complex and overlapping. Despite the chilly darkness, the initial section of the passage was relatively friendly as there were no side roads. However, another kilometer down the road and the tunnel suddenly split into three branches. Strangely, there were no changes in the spirit chi concentration underground, except a slight difference on and below the surface. Might as well close your eyes and bet on your luck then, Lu Xu thought. There was no obvious right or wrong answer now due to the lack of evidence and clues. With the confidence that he had always been lucky, Lu Xu went on, and, successfully, he got lost. He drew a deep breath at a familiar fork in the road. What the heck? how to decide which way he had tried and which he had not in a labyrinth. By markings? Upon second thoughts, Lu Xu changed into a new set of clothes and removed his cap and mask. Then, he pocketed his sun mirror, leaving a small volume of divine water for lighting purposes. This way, he would be less recognizable. Lu Xu was certain that he was not the only person that lost his way in the maze. Thus, it was very likely for him to cross his way with those big organizations, who might be interested in testing his waters. Although the individual practitioners had no idea why Nojoa Takenabu was scared of Lu Xu, the experts knew well that Nojoa had no other choice given that pitiful conditions of his. No matter how strong Lu Xu might seem, Li Ishia would not have to run if he were a Class B2. Two Class Bs could definitely defeat Nojoa Takenabu given enough time. This was the key point from which rational deductions of the entire story could then be made. But many had already put their guard up against Lu Xu. It was a widely acknowledged fact that overseas remains were tantamount to cold-blooded battlefields where no sympathy existed. The Heavenly Network certainly had their reasons for dispatching so little manpower there. 
nowadays, no one would dare to underestimate Nye Ting. Was he an irrational risk-taker? Definitely not. Hence, many of them were already starting to devise counter-strategies against Lu Xu's unique techniques. Those few who happened to bring shades had also handed them over to their leaders. Truth be told, quite a number brought sunglasses, as the remains were located on a tourist island. So why not take sunglasses from the individual practitioners? There were so many of them, thought the big organizations. As a result, all of their shades were surrendered. How sad. Not only were they forced to be their cannon fodder, they were robbed too. Nonetheless, gradually, their grudges shifted from big organizations to Lu Xu, the starter of the trouble. As Lu Xu walked along the dimly lit tunnels, he suddenly received a large influx of distress points. It felt. Others might deem it as a sign of an unforeseen disaster, but to Lu Xu, it was a heaven-sent fortune. As he ventured further, he left markings on the walls with corpse dog and concealed arrow, to prevent himself from walking the same path over and over again. Of course, he had to do it in a creative manner. The long trekking was dull and boring, so why not make it more interesting for those people behind? In the meantime, unaffiliated practitioners were forced to split up and search for the relic. Half an hour later, those in the front suddenly shouted in surprise, Look! There are words on the wall. Just imagine, you are walking through an empty, monotonous tunnel and suddenly, you notice a line of words on the wall. How would you feel? Surprise, of course. Finally you've found some useful clues. As the big organizations at the back sent their people over, a individual practitioners crowded around a pro who was studying the words with a torchlight in his hand. It was a line of English carvings. Our expedition discovered this place by chance. We were forced underground by gargoyles but lost our way in the tunnels. On the seventh day, our supplies ran out. We may all die here if we can't go out in time. However, the greatest danger here is not shortage of food and water. We have noticed that our men are disappearing without reason. I. That made the individual practitioner's flesh creep. Why did the sentence end so abruptly? Did he disappear too? When he was writing that? All of them drew a startled breath. It would not be that scary if you read it online. However, it was absolutely a horror story to see it on the wall there. In their opinion, which expert would crack such a lame joke? They looked at one another in shock. Although they did not believe it completely, they were still seized by terror and a feeling of uncertainty. The expert remained silent for a long moment. He was having a headache at what to do too. A Class B expert slowly came over from the back of the team. What happened? Then, he took a glimpse of the carvings, and replied calmly, Go ahead to see whether there are more of this. Admittedly, power brings along confidence. In this instance, the self-assured would still be able to remain cool-headed, instead of being buried in panic. The expert immediately trotted forward at a quick step. Yet, he stopped within seconds. From Townsend House's distress, plus 666. Out of curiosity, other people moved closer for a good look. There was another line on the wall that read. I have three points to say about this place. They were confused, which three? Then they got it, weren't there three bloody points behind? Verified, it must be left behind by an expert as a means to relieve them from their boredom. However, how bloody bored were you? What were you getting out of this? A few steps forward and there appeared a Doryman scrawled on the wall. I am Doryman. I will give you a time machine if you let your head duong 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 on the ground with sincerity. From Townsend House's distress, plus 666. From. It was in English too. But since Lu Xu had yet to learn the word kowtow, and clearly had no idea how to express it, he completed the sentence in his awkward Chinglish. Yet, does it even make sense that there was a Doryman in the remains? Besides, what was with your duong duong duong? Don't write it if you don't know the word, can't you? 
all of them were dumbstruck by the absurdness. Instantly, numerous distress points were registered in the background, taking Lu Xu by surprise. In the meantime, Lu Xu had reached another parting of the road. As the influx of distress points went on, he murmured to himself, What should I write this time? Chapter 440, Underground River Lu Xu was right. He was not the only one who got lost in the underground tunnels. Further inside, the passage gradually widened. But it seemed that they were nowhere near the end. At a new fork in the road, there was a marking beside the left branch. After some deliberation, Lu Xu carved an identical symbol on the right branch too. Lu Xu had seen many markings along the way, but they were then rendered useless thanks to him. Within a few hours, his prank had started to cause other people trouble. Those who happened to return to their starting point would realize, to their horror, both ways had been marked. Had both routes been explored? From During the process of finding his bearings, Lu Xu had run into his own markings as well, regarding the three points about the remains. Now, there was another sentence scrambled beside. Say. What are the three points? <laughs> you will never get the relic with such low IQ. Suddenly, a thought crossed Lu Xu's mind. Why not be worry-free and stay here to create his walls of arts, while the old man was on his way to the relic? The distress points earned would already have made the trip worthwhile. He had ignited the fourth star with the help of a celestial fruit, and was only three quarters away to the fifth. At the moment, he was startled by a series of footsteps in the tunnel behind. It sounded like a huge crowd. Could it be some big organization with their enslaved individual practitioners? With no intention to interact with them, Lu Xu immediately left with his corpse dog and concealed arrow. However, indistinctly many footsteps were heard from in front as well. Was it a bloody reunion between two teams? In the next instant, the two organizations came into sight. An Australian team and the leader of the pledge with dozens of individual practitioner followers. The atmosphere was somewhat awkward, but the most awkward among them all was Lu Xu, who was stuck in between. The encounter was totally unexpected. Then, curious stares were soon drawn to the young man in the center. Who was he? Clad in a new set of clothes, Lu Xu looked no different from the other unaffiliated practitioners. Earlier, there were a number of them who ducked into the tunnels before everyone else, and it would be hard to recognize him without knowing his true face. Suddenly, someone spoke from the Australian group of individual practitioners, Why are you here alone? Come over here. Lu Xu turned to see Meng Jingchan. Oh. The leaders of the Australian team fixed Lu Xu with a cold stare. In fact, who would be bothered to remember the faces of over hundreds of individual practitioners in the darkness, especially for a messy group like this? Moreover, individual practitioners were expendable resources to them, so they could not be less concerned about whether the new man was an original member of the team. In the meantime, the leader of the pledge directed his team back with slight hesitation. He inferred from the situation that the relic was not in the direction ahead. Lu Xu joined the group of individual practitioners. After a long moment of silence, Meng Jingchan whispered, This system of tunnels is like a labyrinth. Any new discoveries? Nope. I'm lost too, Lu Xu replied honestly. Suddenly a person in front shouted, There are words on the wall again. Meng Jingchan smiled. Did you notice those words? I wonder what kind of expert would be so fond of pranks. Carving so many words on the walls in the process of searching for the relic. Lu Xu paused for a few seconds. He must be handsome, caring and full of childlike innocence. Meng Jingchan. It must have been you. I knew it. The crowd muddled their way along. Actually, leaders from both parties did not make any attempts at communication, as they were all aware that the top priority now was to find a way out, not the relic. The relic might be located at the exit of the maze. But everything would be meaningless if they could not get out. More importantly, torches were the main lighting device for the majority, 
yet there were limited batteries. To make things worse, many of the torches were already running out of power, as the average battery life of a normal torchlight was not long after all. They could not even find the right way with their lights on, then what about in the darkness? Tension began to build up due to the approaching danger. Small discussions were sparked off among individual practitioners, brainstorming for any possible solutions. But Meng Jingchan noticed that Lu Xu was calm all along, as though totally unconcerned. Many had witnessed the fighting scene between Lu Xu, Li Yixiao and Nojua to Kenabu, as well as Lu Xu's golden glow. Actually, Meng Jingchan was curious about his power too after he defeated a Class B practitioner. Meanwhile, she had also thought it through and concluded that the person that she had wanted to rope in was not on the same level as her. Suddenly, someone shouted, Water. I can hear flowing water. Others heard it too. Instantly everyone started to search for clues of water, which could possibly lead them to the exit. The group in front marched forward at a faster rate, with some cheering. Exit. We are saved. <laughs> We've found it. The crowd thronged towards the exit. Outside the tunnel was an unprecedentedly vast underground space, with a black river running through it rapidly. One person hurried to the riverbank, cupped a scoop of river water in his hands, and observed it under the torchlight. The water was transparent. Thus, the black appearance of the river was probably due to lighting. Suddenly, he felt a sting on his ankle. Looking down, he gasped in shock as countless black beetles crawled out of the river. Immediately a black spot started to grow from his ankle. Save me, the individual practitioner ran back at once, but was sliced into halves by an expert's highly concentrated air sword. He demanded cold-bloodedly, all of you, go and settle the bugs. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Last half full or empty And we just put them on the show